Hello friends, the topic of this video is modifications of deep fascia of thigh which is also known as fascia lata. The questions that come in exam usually are in the form of write short notes on modifications of deep fascia of thigh or fascia lata or you can be also asked to write a short note on iliotibial tract or saphenous opening. Actually, these two are modifications of deep fascia of thigh. You can be also asked to enumerate the structures that pierce cribri from fascia. So, what is deep fascia of thigh or fascia later? Like any other deep fascia of the body in any other region, the deep fascia of thigh or fascia later also lies deep to the superficial fascia and superficial to the muscles of the thigh. Here in thigh, the deep fascia is very strong and it forms a fibrous sheath which envelops the thigh like a sleeve or a stocking. So this is the anterior view of the deep fascia of thigh and this is the posterior view of the fascia lata or deep fascia of thigh. So we can see here the upper boundaries of the thigh can be seen here. This is inguinal ligament and this is the iliac crest. And below here we can see petilla and we'll have the femoral condyles on either side here. Then posteriorly again we can see here this is the iliac crest. This is the boundary between the um, lower limb and the trunk there. And this is the sacrum and the coccyx here. Now on the posterior aspect it can be seen that the fascia later that becomes continuous with the popliteal fascia. This is the fascia which is present in the popliteal fossa, a diamond shaped hollow or depression just behind the knee joint. Let us look at the attachments of the fascia lata. So first we will look at the superior attachments of the fascia lata and then the inferior attachments of the fascia lata. Superiorly, obviously it will be attached to the structures which form the boundary between the trunk and the thigh. So it will be attached to structures which will be forming the boundary anteriorly, laterally, posteriorly and medially. So let us see anteriorly it will be attached to which structures. You can see a green line here representing the inguinal ligament which extends between anterior superior iliac spine. A prominence here at the anterior end of the iliac crest. And another bony prominence is here on the pubis bone which is known as pubic tubercle. So here the fascia lata, this is the red line represents that, that will be attached along the inferior aspect of the inguinal ligament and also to the anterior superior iliac spine. Let us see laterally where it will be attached. Laterally as you can see here it will be attached to the outer margin of the iliac crest. So this is from the anterior uh, aspect the view. From the posterior aspect I'll, you will just see here it will be attached here to the outer margin of the iliac crest. Now posteriorly where it will be attached. So you can see here laterally attached to the outer margin of iliac crest and then why are the gluteal fascia? This region is known as gluteal region. Why are the gluteal fascia? It will be attached to this bone that is sacrum and to the coccyx and to this ligament, right, which is extending or stretching, stretched between the sacrum and the ischial tuberosity. I hope all of you know the three parts of the hip bone, ilium, pubis and ischia. So from the sacrum till the ischial tuberosity, this green ligament, right, structure is the sacrotuberous ligament. So it will be attached to sacrotuberous ligament. Now it will turn medially. So medially where it will be attached, this is the ischial tuberosity we can see here. Medially it will be attached to the ischial pubic ramus here and to the body of the pubis and then goes a little deep to this uh, beginning of the attachment of the fascia lata deep to that along the pectineal line. Now it you can see this as a sheet of cloth right so it has got two ends you start the first uh, end and that will be attached along this anterior lateral and posterior margin and when you come to the medial aspect this end the other end is not in line with the uh, anterior end 
this is a little deeper so this part becomes a more superficial uh, strata and this medial aspect when it reaches the medial aspect this goes a little deep to this anterior end of the cloth so here we will have an opening also i think in the first slide we saw saphenous opening and because of this arrangement we have an opening so in this part you will be able to see that the fascia lata is arranged in two strata a superficial and a deep this will go a little deep over a muscle known as pectineus and then gets attached to the uh, here pectineal line let us see the inferior attachment inferiorly how it will be attached inferiorly it will be attached to all major bony prominences that is along the margins of the patella along the condyles of the femur above condyles of the tibia below and to the head of the fibula so this is the posterior aspect of the same structures that can be seen so inferior it is easy all bony major prominences that you see it will be attached to them now what are the modifications of defacia of thigh there are three modifications one is iliotibial tract then we have the intermuscular septa and the saphenous opening right i'll deal with the intermuscular septa in the end so let us see what is iliotibial tract some people also call it iliotibial band so iliotibial tract is nothing but the fascia lata which is thickened laterally and it forms a tract or a band so you can see here along the lateral aspect this is a lateral view right of the thigh and of the gluteal region so this thickened uh, fascia lata is known as iliotibial tract now this is approximately you can see the width of this is 5 uh, cm especially in the upper part and then it receives insertion of two muscles we can see here two muscles so this is the tensor fascia lata and these both these muscles are of the gluteal region and the other muscle is the gluteus maximus not the whole of the gluteus maximus but its superficial 3/4 majority of this except for the deeper 1/4 part rest of the gluteus maximus will be inserted via the tensor uh, uh, sorry the iliotibial tract so the two muscles which are inserted they are tensor fascia lata and the gluteus maximus which part superficial 3/4 now let us look at the attachment of the iliotibial tract so superiorly again let us see where it is attached now if we look at the superior attachment you will find here this um, iliotibial tract divides into two layers this is the superficial layer and this is the deep layer the superficial layer this will uh, go superficial to the tensor fascia lata and or lata you whatever however you pronounce it it goes superficial to that and will be attached here there is a tubercle here of the iliac crest and it will be attached to the tubercle of the iliac crest there whereas the deep layer which you can see goes deep to the tensor fascia lata and it will be merging with the capsule of the hip joint so this is the superior attachment of this and from the posterior aspect the gluteus maximus fibers uh, are coming and getting inserted into the uh, iliotibial tract now inferiorly where it is attached it is attached to a flattened triangular area is present on the anterior surface of lateral condyle of tibia tibia has got two condyles lateral and medial so the lateral condyle on its which surface anterior surface and you'll find there is a flat triangular area on that it is attached now what is the function of this what is the importance of uh, this iliotibial tract it stabilizes the knee in extended uh, position of the knee joint once the muscles uh, have extended the knee joint after that the iliotibial tract that takes over it also helps in semi flex position to stabilize the uh, knee joint how it uh, helps in that when a person is actually bending forward in a semi flexed knee then it prevents the person from falling forward right because of the uh, center of gravity there so and this uh, position you sometimes extend the knee then you flex the knee so it is constantly used in running and walking now next modification is saphenous opening so let us see what is the saphenous opening as i told you earlier also that we can see here uh, about the two strata of the 
uh, fascia latas right so we'll talk about this a moment later so what exactly is saphenous opening it is an oval shaped opening in the fascia lata where exactly it is located in the upper medial part of front of thigh so this is front of thigh this is upper part and obviously this is lateral and this is the medial part so it is easy to remember upper medial part of front of thigh there it is located now the center of this saphenous opening is inferior and lateral to the pubic tubercle and what is the distance this is the pubic tubercle so from here 3 to 4 cm approximately 3 to 4 cm inferior lateral to the pubic tubercle what is the length approximate length of this the length is 3 to 4 cm in length now this is if you look at this in this one also it becomes clear it has actually a sharp superior lateral and inferior borders and this is known as falciform margin so this is much well demarcated sharp margin is there whereas the medial margin of this is not very sharp because this fascia remember i told you the two layers of the cloth so this is the first layer of the cloth you can see here right and this is the end of that cloth which actually forms the medial aspect of the saphenous opening and this is going to cover here it goes like this deep you can see here it is going deep cover the pectineus muscle okay so now if you look at these structures here there this is the femoral sheath the femoral vessels they will pass uh, from the uh, abdomen to the thigh behind the inguinal ligament so they are enclosed in fibrous sheath known as femoral sheath okay so you'll find that this superficial strata of the fascia lata that is superficial to the uh, femoral sheath whereas the deep strata of the uh, fascia lata that is deep to the femoral sheath right so it becomes very obvious so there is a gap here and why the gap is there this is known as saphenous opening so this gap is to provide the draining of the great saphenous vein a great superficial vein of the lower limb which is known as great saphenous vein into the femoral vein okay so that's why because this is the main structure which passes through this gap and that's why the name of this opening is saphenous opening now as i told you earlier its medial border is ill defined and now this gap the gap which is remaining here this is not seen as a gap but a uh, an areolar tissue that bridges the gap between the lateral margin and the medial margin right and it has got number of holes in it because many structures are going to pass through that so this fascia is known as cribriform fascia so this is going to be present here oh, where the gap is present the saphenous opening is there so in here it will be covering this right and what is this in nature this is loose areolar tissue is there okay so this is the cribriform fascia so let me see say it one again once again what is the shape of the saphenous opening it is oval in shape where it is located it is located in the upper medial part of front of thigh what is the distance from pubic tubercle the distance is 3 to 4 cm inferior lateral to the pubic tubercle what is the length again 3 to 4 cm so it is not difficult to remember both are 3 to 4 cm which margin of the saphenous opening is sharp the superior lateral and inferior which is not well marked that is the medial margin and what bridges this gap what is present between the lateral and the medial margin that is cribriform fascia now let us see structures piercing cribriform fascia if you get a short note on the um, modifications of deep fascia then you have to write everything whatever is there in the video right if you get to uh, write a short note on saphenous opening then you'll write about that plus you will also write the structures piercing cribriform fascia or passing through the saphenous opening okay but most of the time this uh, will come as an enumeration right so there you have to enumerate the structures that pass through the saphenous opening or pierce the cribriform fascia one and the same thing now the structures are as i told you the most important structure is the great saphenous vein this is a superficial vein of the 
uh, lower limb right so this is you can see it is draining into the femoral vein so this is the most important structure then what else we have we have three arteries these three arteries are the superficial branches of femoral artery so their names are first is superficial epigastric artery as the name suggests this will be going towards them like a superficial epigastric artery then second is superficial external pudendal when the pudendal word comes that means it is related to the genitalia there so this is going towards the genitals so here this is superficial external pudendal because we have internal pudendal also artery so superficial external pudendal moreover we also have deep external pudendal okay so that's why the name is superficial external pudendal artery and the third would be superficial circumflex artery right superficial circumflex iliac artery iliac word is also there which is missing here but you can see here the superficial circumflex iliac artery so you can see here it is going towards the uh, anterior superior iliac spine right just running below the inguinal ligament so this is superficial circumflex iliac artery then the veins corresponding veins of these superficial arteries they do not pass through the cribriform fascia why is it so because these veins of the same name they will drain into the great saphenous vein before the great saphenous vein pierces cribriform fascia so when the great saphenous vein is here itself right then these three tributaries they will drain into the Um, great saphenous vein then only great saphenous vein is going to pass through the cribriform fascia so you have to remember arteries superficial arteries are there they will pierce but not the superficial veins then what else is there we have some lymph vessels which connect these are the superficial inguinal lymph nodes and along the femoral vein along its side we will have the deep inguinal lymph nodes so these lymph vessels they will be connecting the superficial inguinal lymph nodes to the deep inguinal lymph nodes so these are the structures which will be piercing the cribriform fascia the last part right that is intermuscular septa this is present everywhere you and you have seen in the arm also in the forearm also and similarly in the thigh also so here also in the arm we had only two compartments right but here in the thigh we have three muscular compartments okay so there will be three intermuscular septa they will be there so if we take a cross section from the thigh then you can see here this is the femur and its posterior border is a very sharp with two lips which is known as linea aspera this is on the posterior aspect so this is anterior this is posterior and you will see here that this is the medial and this is the lateral aspect so let us see the intermuscular septa three intermuscular septa will be this is the medial intermuscular septa this is the posterior intermuscular septa and this is the lateral intermuscular septa all of them are going to the linea aspera there now the three compartments of the thigh muscular compartments of the thigh they will be the anterior compartment which is also known as extensor compartment remember it's opposite of the arm in the arm anterior compartment is the flexor compartment okay and the posterior is the extensor but here it is just reverse of that because what happens during development the upper limb right that rotates laterally whereas the lower limb rotates medially right so that's why its extensor compart comes to lie in the anterior part so this is the anterior or the extensor compartment between which two septa medial and lateral intermuscular septa then you have a small medial compartment between the medial intermuscular septa and the posterior intermuscular septa so this will be the medial compartment of muscle we also call it adductor compartment these muscles will be responsible for adduction of the thigh then we have posterior compartment or the flexor compartment of the thigh between the posterior the intermuscular septa and the uh, lateral intermuscular septa so this completes it so that's all for this video thanks for watching and if you have not subscribed please subscribe my channel so that i can put more such videos and if you want uh, the questions and answers in anatomy all types of that then visit the website that is anatomyqa.com thanks once again